Could you influence Vladimir Putin and prevent World War III? Would you be able to make your high school teacher like you? Do you want to lead the Earthlings in the intergalactic battle against the Martians? In part 1, we had a look at some of the fundamental techniques required for being a more likable and influential person. Being influential might sound like it's manipulative and a bad thing, but actually we all manipulate people to one degree or another all the time. What's important is the way you use your manipulation. Are you using it as an influence to positively impact people's lives, or are you using it for selfish reasons, doing damage along the way? The next part of the book goes into more specific tactics, namely the six ways to make people like you. Yes, we too like to get recognition and appreciation. So how do we elicit this response in other people? By being Bono, feeding children in Africa, of course. Is that a little too much? Alright, how about we start out by smiling? Smiling is an incredibly easy but powerful act. Smiles are free to give and can be given at any moment. It's especially in the times when you don't feel like smiling that you should crack up and start beaming. Not only does this change your own thinking pattern and physiology, but it also makes other people feel good. Just think about the last time a cute girl smiled at you. Didn't that give you a boner? Next, you should become genuinely interested in people. You can make more friends in two months by being interested in them than in two years of making them interested in you. Once again, letting go of that focus on you is a tremendous asset. We are all very self-absorbed, which makes sense since we all live our own life. But trying to get other people to live our lives is a futile attempt. After all, they've got tons of people tugging at them to live their lives every day. Instead, we should live a part of other people's lives voluntarily and sincerely. We should hide in the closet and watch them take a shower to get that really deep personal connection. Because many people will reject an attempt of taking their time, but will welcome any given time with open arms. At moments, this book might seem like it just shows how egocentric people are, which can make us feel bad about ourselves. But we can deny this fact and feel better, which would be very egocentric, or we can accept it and learn from it, which ties in perfectly to the next lesson. Remember that a person's name is, to that person, the sweetest and most important sound in any language. This may sound a little extreme, but it's true. Just think of all the times you heard someone say your name from far away and it immediately captured your attention. Or when someone keeps mispronouncing your name, it will irritate you deeply. Or even worse, when someone you've known for some time doesn't remember your name altogether. It will make you feel like the person isn't really interested in you or appreciates you. Keep this in mind the next time someone introduces themselves to you and make an effort of remembering their name and pronouncing it right. Say it out loud a couple of times, study it thoroughly or tattoo it on your forehead. Whatever helps you best. The next lesson has been one of the hardest but also most powerful lessons for me. It's being a good listener. But good listening goes beyond just listening. It's about asking the right questions to elicit a deeper response. When your coworker is telling you that she went to a Justin Bieber concert, don't ask why she didn't go to an actual artist. Instead, ask how long she was washing her panties afterwards. Making people talk about the stuff they like is a surefire way to win their heart. We'll combine the last two points into one. They are talking in terms of the other person's interest and making the other person feel important. I kind of gave away the importance of talking into the other person's interest already. And if you combine that with all the other previous tips, the sum will be that you will make someone feel important. And once again, feeling important will satiate that craving for appreciation and recognition we all have. After all the gifts this book has given us, we aren't even halfway done. But since we're running low on space and time, we'll compound some of the best parts together and you'll simply have to read the whole book to uncover all the gems. Here are some of the 12 ways to win people to your way of thinking. The only way to get the best out of an argument is by avoiding it. There is nothing wrong with the discussing things, but arguments tend to get nasty and unproductive very quickly. Avoid them if you can. If for some reason you are in an argument or you are accused of something, admit it when you're wrong. 
Admitting when you're wrong diffuses another person extremely quickly and will usually make them admit their mistakes as well. Another handy trick is to start with questions a person will say yes to. Have them get into that yes mode before you ask them the questions that you really need the yes for. Hey Bob, do you like chocolate? Yes. Hey Bob, have you ever been swimming? Yes. Hey Bob, can I snort cocaine off your wife's boobs? Yes. Oh, the power of yes. An idea that I also love to implement is dramatizing ideas. It's taking stuff to the next level metaphorically. Instead of saying, I smacked a fly yesterday. Say, so there I was, standing on top of the counter. I knew the bastard could see me, but little did he know that I prepared for this moment from the day I was born. In the blink of an eye, I was airborne, releasing all the tension in my muscles. I could see a face of shock in his round rester of eyes, and his wings started flapping as I swept the paper around and smacked him with a force that made the ceiling crack. You can also take stuff to the next level in a physical way, especially by challenging other people to something. Challenging someone whilst appealing to their noble motives is a great way to arouse powerful emotions in them. Make them want to tackle your challenge so badly that they can't refuse. And then when they own up to the challenge and kick it Bruce Lee style, reward them with recognition and appreciation. Always give recognition and appreciation. That's a wrap. We've looked at a ton of stuff already and for the sake of not cramming too damn much information in one video, we'll end it here. If you want to become better at people skills, I cannot emphasize enough how much this book will teach you. It's literally the guidebook on navigating people. Really, read it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy this content, don't forget to join the pack by subscribing down below. And remember, recognition and appreciation.